Hello grade 11 and grade 12 learners. In this video, we're going to be going over the grade 10 electricity, electric circuits, topic and it's very very important that you watch this video and you go over the grade 10 stuff first because in grade 11 and in grade 12 you use the concepts and everything that you learned in grade 10 again however your teacher might just skip over it they might expect you to know it so it's super important that you go over it and revise it before jumping into the new grade 11 and grade 12 stuff like stuff that involves emf and internal resistance power cost of electricity all of those things so let's go you should know that electricity is the movement of charge, the flow of electrons. Electricity and this section is all about energy conversion. So we start off with chemical potential energy within the battery, and that is converted to electrical energy. Okay, so electrical energy is what causes the charges, the electrons to move around the circuit. And that electrical energy is converted into heat energy or light energy, or energy needed to power the appliances. And you'll often see a discussion surrounding the direction of current flow. So this says, although moving charges in most metal conductors are electrons, electrons are negative. And think about that. If they're a negative, they will flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal. That's what makes sense. So that's called electron flow current. That's the blue circuit I drew over here. So because electrons are negative, they flow from the negative terminal of the battery through to the positive terminal because negatives are attracted to the positive. That makes sense. It's called electron flow current. But we work with conventional current flow, which is current flow from the positive terminal of the battery through to the negative. And just as a reminder, a battery can be represented by the following symbol like that. The small line is the negative terminal of the battery. The big line is the positive terminal of the battery. So just know the differences between conventional current and electron flow current. We work with conventional current. Okay, so as I mentioned, we need a closed circuit in order for electricity to flow, in order for current to flow. The conducting wires, usually copper, provide a pathway for the current to flow, and the push comes from the battery. That's my energy source or my power source. Now, it is very important for you to be able to draw a circuit and to be able to look at a circuit and understand what the different components are. So I've listed some components that you will be seeing in circuits, and it is important to understand the symbols. So a cell looks like this, as I've shown you. The long line is positive, the small line is negative. This is representative of a battery with three cells. So what they could say to you is that the voltage across the battery is six volts. And if I have three cells, that means that each battery will have an EMF of two volts or each cell, sorry. So two volts, two volts, two volts together. It gives me six volts. You need to understand that this is an open switch and a closed switch. Remember, switch must be closed in order for the current to flow and the circuit to function. This is how we draw a light bulb. There are more than one ways, there's more than one ways often to represent light bulb or resistor. This is generally what we use. So a light bulb looks like that, a circle with a cross in it. Then we've got a normal resistor. You will either see a resistor represented with a squiggly line like that, but more commonly in our curriculum, it looks like this, like a little box. Okay, that's a resistor. A rheostat is a variable resistor. So we can change the resistance of a rheostat. An ammeter measures current, and it's always connected in series. A voltmeter measures potential difference or voltage, and it is always connected in parallel. Ammeters are connected in series. So here we can see this is the main line of the circuit. The ammeter is connected in series. So it's connected along the main line of the circuit. You can see that a voltmeter is different. Here's the main line of the circuit. There's the main line of the circuit. The total current flows through that main line. The voltmeter branches off, which means it is connected in parallel. And the reason why voltmeters are connected in parallel is because they have a very, very, very high resistance, which means that current does not want to flow through them. What this means is that if I decided to connect the voltmeter in series like this, so if pretend that instead of the ammeter, we have a voltmeter. If I had to connect a voltmeter in series, the 
total resistance of the circuit would be way too high, which means current would be tiny and the circuit would not function. So we connect it in parallel like this because the current does not want to flow through here. All that this voltmeter does is it measures the potential difference between two points in a circuit. So for example, it tells me the voltage or the potential difference across this resistor. Or this voltmeter over here would tell me the potential difference or voltage across the battery. But current does not want to flow through there. Right, now, before I show you the difference between resistors connected in parallel and series, I want to go over the different variables within an electric circuit. And grade 10s, 11s, and 12s, this is so, so, so important. I mark papers all the way up to metric level, and I often see that students get confused between the quantity, okay, and the symbol to represent that quantity, and the unit. There's a massive, massive difference. So I've made a table summarizing what that difference is. I've listed all the different um, quantities that you will see throughout electricity or electric circuits, the symbol, and the unit. And I've given an example of how we use it. So starting from the top of the table, we've got potential difference or voltage. The symbol for that is V, and the unit for that is V. So for example, if I want to say the potential difference across the battery is 10 volts, I say the potential difference across the battery is equal to 10 volts. This is the symbol. It's basically a placeholder instead of writing potential difference or instead of writing voltage. Okay, I explain it over here like if I say my height is 155 centimeters, instead of writing my height is 155 centimeters, I can say H is equal to 155 centimeters. So H is a symbol. It's like a shortened version of writing out height, but the unit is centimeters. Okay, so the unit always comes after your answer. It is very, very, very different to the symbol. And learners often get this confused in the context of current. So if I want to say the current, the total current in the circuit is three amperes, instead of writing current is equal to three amperes. Amperes is the unit. Instead of writing the current is equal to three amperes, I can write I is equal to three amperes. I is a symbol for current. Okay, cool. Now, while I'm speaking about symbols and units and stuff like that, it is very important to note that you must write A as your unit for current, not amps. I know some teachers, some textbooks, some YouTube videos may informally refer to A as being amps. That's incorrect. We actually mark that wrong. So if you say three amps, we're going to take away your answer mark because amps is an incorrect unit. You either write A or you write out the full word, amperes. I know that that might sound silly um, but and a little bit pedantic, but that is how we mark, okay? Then we've got resistance is measured in ohms. That's the symbol for ohms. You say ohms. Charge, the symbol is Q and it's measured in coulombs. C is coulombs. The charge is 10 coulombs. Work or energy, they mean the same thing. So work done or energy transferred is measured in joule, J. Power, P, is measured in what? What? Okay. Those are my symbols for my quantities and those are my units. It's very important to know those. Then in grade 10, this is the formula sheet that you receive in your exams. Now, in grade 11 and in grade 12, you add, we add a lot more formulas, especially those relating to work or energy and relating to power. However, these are my basic formulae, and you need to know this whether you're in grade 10, 11, or grade 12. So let's quickly go over what these formulas are. These formulas are to calculate resistance within a circuit. If my resistors are connected in series, I use this formula. R1 plus R2 plus whatever. If I have three resistors, then my formula needs to include R1, R2, and R3. If I have two resistors in series, my formula will stop over there. I hope that makes sense. This is for series resistors. Then if resistors are connected in parallel, which I will go over in a little bit in this video, we use one of RP is one of R1 plus one of R2. 
If I just have two resistors in parallel, you stop over there. You don't have to put the dots. If I have three resistors in parallel, it goes one over R3. So those are my formulas in order to calculate resistance. And remember, resistance is measured in ohms. This formula over here is used in order to calculate charge. Okay, so the amount of charge transferred in a circuit, charge is measured in coulombs. Or we can use this formula to help us calculate current. Remember, current is measured in amperes. And then this is time. And this is very important to note, but in this formula, time must be in seconds. It's often given in minutes. We need to convert. This formula is used to calculate potential difference or voltage. Very, very important. Please take note that potential difference and voltage, it means the same thing. I know we often refer to it as voltage, you know, informally, but potential difference is a more correct term. It's measured in volts. W is work done or energy transferred. Remember, although the formula says W as in work, work done, they can also give it to you in terms of energy. Work and energy are the same thing. It's measured in joules. We spoke about Q. Q is charge measured in coulombs. This formula over here is representative of what we call Ohm's law. You may see it represented in a triangle like this. V, I, R. R is obviously resistance. It's measured in ohms. V is potential difference or voltage measured in volts. And I is current measured in amperes. You need to know when to use which formula. And in order to know that, you need to understand your quantities or your variables. A massive part of completing electricity and circuit questions is knowing and being able to recognize when our circuits and our resistors or our components are connected in series versus when they are connected in parallel or when there's a combination going on. So resistors in series, I have highlighted this already, but I'll show you once more. If I start by the battery, and this is supposed to be a battery, and I follow the main line of the circuit. So you take your highlighter, you take your finger, and you follow the main line of the circuit like this. You can see that R1, R2, and R3 are all connected in the same line, the main line of the circuit. There are no branches, which means R1, R2, and R3 are connected in series. In order to calculate the total resistance of the circuit, you will say R1 plus R2 plus R3. You will simply add them up 10 plus 20 plus 30, and that is equal to 60 ohms. That's how you calculate resistance, resistance in series. Super easy. Same thing with this um, circuit. They're all connected in series. And same thing with the circuit over here. They're both connected in series. As you can see, it doesn't matter if I draw R1 and R2 next to each other or R1 over here and R2 over here. They're still in the main line of the circuit. Therefore, they are connected in series. A parallel connection is quite obvious to see. This and this over here is representative of the same circuit. The reason I drew both of them is because in some exams, in some textbooks, in some study guides, you will see it being represented like this. In some um, books, you'll see it being represented like this and some past papers, but they mean the same thing. So in yellow, I've highlighted where the total current will be in the circuit. So from the battery, total current, total current, total current, total current, total current. And then at this point over here, which I will indicate with a red dot, we can see that there's a split in the main line of the circuit. Some of the current goes through the top branch, so in other words, through R1, and some of the current goes through the bottom branch, through R2. Then they join again. So this will still be R1 over here. On this side over here, this will still be R2 over there. And then once again at the red dot, they join, and it becomes total current again. This is the same thing, except the branching is just drawn a bit differently. So it splits there and there, R1, R2. This is basically the same representation, total current, total current, total current. Then there's a split. Some of the current goes through this branch, the 15 ohms, and the rest of the current goes through the seven ohm branch like this. And then they join up again at this point over here. And these circuits over here represent the same thing. It's just that over here, there are three resistors in parallel. Now, how would you calculate resistance in parallel? I mean, if I had to do the circuit over here at the bottom, because it actually has values, what I would do 
is I would say 1 over RP, because these are in parallel, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, R1. And I want you to think of R1 as being this branch. What is the resistance of this branch? This branch is 15 ohms. So it's 1 over 15 plus R2. I want you to think of R2 as being this branch. Which resistors are in that branch? Just the 7 ohms. So it's 1 over 7. Then what you do is you type it as is on your calculator like that. 1 over 15 plus 1 over 7. It's a bit of a terrible number, but you get 22 over 105. But please, and I will do this again in a later question, take note that, let me write it a bit nicer, this is 1 over RP is 22 over 105. I just typed 1 over 15 plus 1 over 7 on my calculator. I do not want 1 over RP. I'm looking for RP, resistance in parallel. So what I need to do is I need to flip this fraction. So take the reciprocal or flip this fraction. Because I'm flipping this fraction, I need to do the same thing to the other fraction. So it's going to be 105 over 22. And you can work that out on your calculator, 105 over 22. And I get RP as being 4,77 ohms. Okay, so you flip this fraction, flip this fraction, and then work out an answer. Remember, write it to at least two decimal places, and there's my unit. Now, here are some other circuits, and I hope that you can recognize that this is a combination. These circuits are combination circuits. In other words, we have a resistor that is in series, and we have resistors that are in parallel. I know that these circuits look a little bit different to what you're used to seeing maybe in textbooks, study guides, or in past papers. They come from the internet, but it's basically the same thing. Let's see. This is the battery. So you see it says 12 volts. This is where your battery would be connected. So let's just draw a battery with two cells. This is the main line of the circuit. So the total current will flow. You see it says IT, total current. The total current will flow through R1. Okay. Then I hope you can see that there's a split in the circuit there. I've got a branch and some of the current will go through this branch. The rest of the current will go through this branch. And then they meet up again at this point. And then the total current once again will flow through this part of the circuit. So everywhere where you see yellow is total current. And then where you see the green, that's a split current. And then the blue, that's the rest of the current. What does this mean? This means that these two resistors are in parallel and this resistor is in series. So how would I work out the total resistance of this circuit? Well, I want you to always start off with any parallel resistors, always start off with the parallel combination. And as we discussed, this resistor over here, the 12 ohm, and this resistor over here, the other 12 ohm, they are in parallel. And the way that we know that is because some of the current goes through this branch, the green one, and some of the current goes through the blue branch. So they are in parallel. There's a split in the circuit. So what we need to do in order to calculate resistance of the circuit, so I'm going to write here resistance or total resistance. How we do that is we start off with the parallel resistance. So we're going to go 1 over RP. Now, how many branches do I have? I have the green branch and the blue branch. So 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. I want you to think of R1 as being the green branch. And I want you to think of R2 as being the blue branch. That's my formula. You get a mark for writing your blank formula. Then, what is in the green branch? What resistance is in the green branch? This one, 12 ohms. So it's 1 over 12 plus... What resistance is in the blue branch? Look at the blue branch. We've just got this one, 12 ohms. So 1 over 12. Basically, you can do that on your calculator, but this is a very easy one. This is 2 over 12. And remember what I showed you? We don't want RP. We 1 over RP, we want RP. So we must flip that fraction. So RP comes to the top. It's basically RP over 1 if we flip it, but RP. And then we flip this fraction as well. So it's going to be 12 over 2. What's 12 over 2? It is 6 ohms. Now, what you need to understand about this is what this means is that 
sure when the current splits some of it goes through this 12 ohm some of it goes through this 12 ohm overall this part of the circuit has a resistance of six ohms so it's kind of like removing the parallel section and replacing it with something that has six ohms will basically be the same as the situation that i have at the moment where i have two 12 ohms in parallel i hope that makes sense so overall this part of the circuit is six ohms but remember i also have this resistor over here in series this six ohms so therefore my total resistance is this resistor this six ohms so the one i'm going to call it the yellow one the one that I've highlighted in yellow, plus this 6 ohms, the one that I got over there. So my total resistance is 12 ohms. So you first work out the parallel, get an answer, and then add any resistors that are still in series. Let's take a look at one more circuit, and this one can be quite confusing. Um, and it's this one here on the right. So if I have, this is my battery, okay, there's my battery once more. The total current will flow through the battery the total current will flow through this 6 ohm over here and the total current will flow through here. But then I have a split in my circuit. There's the split and there's the split, depending on which way you look. Some of the current will go through this branch over here. The rest of the current will go through this branch over here. So how do I work out the total resistance of this circuit? I change the values of these resistances just to keep it a little bit interesting, a little bit different. Let's make this one 10 ohms. I just don't want the same answer as the previous one. Let's make this one 4 ohms. So what we do first is we work out the parallel resistance. And now I want you to remember what I told you in the previous example. I want you to think of 1 over R1, 1 over R2. I want you to think of each of these as a branch. Okay, I want you to think of each of them as a branch. So the green branch is going to be R1. And I know that that's confusing because you're like, wait, ma'am, isn't R1 a resistor? So shouldn't there be two of them? I want you to think of these things as branches. This is where a lot of my students go wrong if they, when they don't think of it like this. Think of the blue branch, this one, as R2. Okay, so the, a wrong formula, wrong formula would be saying one over RP is 1 over R1, 1 over R2, plus 1 over R3. And I know some of my students think that because there's 1, 2, 3 resistors here. However, you will only use a formula like this if there are three branches. So you'll only use 1 over R1, 1 over R2, and 1 over R3 for a circuit that looks like this one, where there's 1, 2, 3 branches. If we only have two branches, like we do in this example, the green branch and the blue branch. We only have one over R1 and one over R2. So R1 is both of these resistors together, four and two together. Why am I adding them like this? Because the four and the two are sitting next to each other. They're in series. So it's one over four plus two. Basically, it's one over six because this branch has a resistance of six. Plus the blue branch, one over 10. So it's 1 over 6 plus 1 over 10. I want you to use your calculator to do that. You don't need to do it manually. And we get 4 over 15. But remember, we must flip both fractions. So RP is 15 over 4 ohms. If you want to write that as a decimal, you can. Um, so 15 over 4 is 3,75 ohms. Now, what we just calculated is the resistance of the parallel connection. So this thing basically has a resistance of 3,75 ohms. But remember, we are looking for the total resistance of the circuit, so we must still add this resistor in series. So the total resistance is 3,75, which is basically resistance in parallel, plus 4 ohms, which is basically my resistance in series, and we get 7,75 ohms. So once more, you work out the parallel, then you add what you have in series. So if there were two in series, say there was another four ohms, then you would say 3,75 plus four plus four. But we only have one in series. We don't have that one. So that's why it's just plus four. I hope that makes sense. 